Oh, what's up, frigate chasers? In this video, we go from Florida to the Bahamas by boat on our 27-foot Sea Hunt Game Fish. We start by making the Bimini Crossing, clearing customs, and then proceed to make our way to the Berry Islands and Chub K. This one is slightly different than our previous Bimini Crossing tutorials and how-to videos, as the guys do a sit down after the trip and explain everything they experienced in detail. I was unable to go on the trip thanks to my farming commitment to feeding the world, so go ahead and hit the like button for my sacrifice. But longtime friend Steve was able to join a one Captain Green Jeans along with the newest crew member, Matt. Steve also has a podcast called Canned Conversation where he also talked about the trip and I will link that and all the important information you will need to make the trip yourself down below. If you guessed Canned Conversation is about enjoying adult beverages and talking the crazy talk then you are correct. So in that spirit let's grab a cold one and get right into this. Alright guys. So it is Saturday, May 7th, beautiful day in the Sunshine State. We just got back last night from, how many days was it? Nine days? Nine days. Nine days in the Berry Islands, Bahamas. Uh, had a massively good time. It was such a fun trip. Uh, just to give you a rundown on what we did, we left Thursday evening from Lauderdale, uh, not Lauderdale, sorry, Hillsborough Inlet, and went out through there ran over to Bimini. The crossing to Bimini itself wasn't too bad. A little yeah. bumpy going out, wasn't bad. but wasn't too bad. Uh, got into Bimini Thursday night, got a place at uh, Bimini Big Game Club Thursday night and Friday night. Got up Saturday morning and worked our way over to Great Harbor Key and uh, the Berry Islands. Uh, it was a pretty good crossing overall. The big challenge we had was we were getting tight on a weather window. So if we didn't leave Thursday night, there was a good chance that we may not have made it over till Monday at best. Uh, and potentially even cut off most of the week or wouldn't have made it worth going over there. So we made a call because you always got to manage to your weather window. And then we spent a week in Berry Islands. Yesterday on Friday, we got to look into the weather and it looked like Friday was our last day for a good weather window where we ran the chance of either being massively miserable coming back or not being able to get back and now looking around today it's fairly windy and i have a feeling had we not come back yesterday we would have been hanging out in the bahamas for an extra few days so glad we came home a day early we were supposed to come home today but just made the call and for the most part yesterday's ride back was absolutely gorgeous we got to, honestly it wasn't until we got to about i don't know what three four 10 miles out the last 10 miles were chunky we got into the gulf stream i think in that last 10 miles and then we had the waves pushing in. I think it was going against an out outgoing tide, which always makes it a little rougher. So it wasn't terribly fun for the last 10 miles, but we still had fun with it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. <laughs> we still made the most of it. <laughs> had a couple, uh, a couple sundowners on the way in, so it was fun. Um, great. A couple things to say about the trip. You know, on the, on the way over, it was not a terribly fun trip Saturday going from Bimini to Berry Islands. Uh, it's 80 miles, mainly across the flats. We went north a little bit just so that we could uh, troll a little bit on the way back. Later in the day, it got pretty nice, but I don't know what. The first trip that took us about three hours on the way back it took us six, I think it was. Yeah, the first on the way over. The first few hours were bad. Yeah, we was, ran into some storms, and it wasn't that it was terribly uncomfortable waves. We were running on a plane. We were going at good speed. After a while, we'd get a little sick of it because it was a little bumpy and we'd slow down. The, the worst part was you'd have these little cells come through and the temperature would drop like 15 degrees. Yeah. And then it would start raining and you're just cold and you're bumping around. And if I had a bigger boat, Sarah, uh, it would have been great. But we still had fun. We laughed our butts off the entire way across and made it uh, and then had a blast of a week. Um, couple things that we learned this time from other crossings one is Bahamas now has an app and a website called click to clear where you can go on and fill out all of your 
crossing paperwork, all of your custom stuff. You can upload your passports. Makes it super nice. You get your health visa before you go in. Pretty easy process. You have to tell the information you can upload currently. And keep in mind, it always changes right now with COVID. The current regulations are you, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to have a PCR. You just have to have a rapid antigen. Get one of the tests that you can upload it online. It'll give you the information you need to submit it. We submitted ours and within minutes. We're getting our, uh, our responses that it was being processed. Tells you to pay. You go pay the money. I think it's what, 30 or 40 bucks? 40 bucks. 40, 40 bucks. bucks. Yeah. And then once you pay that 40 bucks, they send you the information. You print off your health visa and you're good to go. It really is fast. I mean, yeah. people online have told us we were looking at like two days. Yeah, they were saying 48 hours or something. Right. And it wasn't. It was within four hours. I, we had some worse. Mine, mine was processed in an hour. Yeah. yeah. It was it was quick. Almost immediately when it said it was processing, I got the notification to pay the, the fee. Yep. As soon as I paid the fee, I walked away from my phone and came back maybe an hour later. And at some point in that hour, mine had been approved. So I mean, it was very quick. And they've really improved stuff. Like when I started going to Bimini, what is it? Four years ago now, four or five years ago now, you had to do all your customs in paper when you got there. You had to pay customs after you fill out the paperwork and there'd always be a line. And you have to walk over to immigration. Then you come back to customs. Now, we didn't even have to, I mean, maybe it's because we went in after hours uh, when someone comes to the boat to get you set up. But the thing we learned was, for one, I thought it was more efficient to come in after hours because the guy shows up and does and helps us. It would have been a massively easy process had we filled out the paperwork on the computer before we left. <laughs> the reason why is because <laughs> when you get there, because it's the Bahamas and they kind of do things the easy route, they literally just had a laptop set up to do the exact same website that you do from your home. The reason we didn't complete ours before we went is because my boat registration was in my key to the boat, which was at the dock. And you have to be able to show them your registration before you can do it. So make sure you take the time if you keep your boat at a high and dry or something like that. Get your registration off the boat, scan it, go to upload it. Because if you would have, we would have put everything on the boat, they're on the uh, online, and then just showed up at customs. He would have, we could have paid online. He would have just checked our paperwork that we had printed out. He would have said peace out and he would have been gone. So something that took us, I don't know what, 45 minutes if that, would have taken 10 minutes at best since we came in after hours. He would have. And on that note, when we're talking about coming in after hours, we kind of had to make an executive decision. We were talking about the weather window and how, you know, we, we really weren't planning on leaving until Friday. We had planned on taking Thursday to get all of our gear together, double double and triple check everything, make sure we had everything we needed for this trip. And instead, on Thursday, when we all started arriving in Miami, we realized that if we didn't get out today, we were gonna miss at least half of our trip. So we, we made a, a really snap decision to go on and leave Thursday. I made a phone call and got us a couple of, or got us a room for a couple of nights at the Bimini Big Game Club, okay? So when we're talking about checking in early, if you go straight to Bimini Big Game, they've got customs on site. They've got uh, customs officers who leave at 7, um, but then they will come back to the resort up until 10 o'clock to check you in, even if you get in after hours. Specifically so, for you. Specifically exactly. For you. No, no line. No line. They, they just come, come to, to your boat. It was great. So that process was so much easier than, than what I've seen in your other videos. Oh, yeah. I didn't go through it, but it was, it was fantastic. We pulled up, uh, told them, hey, you know, We've done this much online. They were like, yeah, no problem. Let us get you squared away. And within 45 minutes, we were trying to check into our room. That's a whole other story, but. <laughs> I will, and I, but I will say this is, had we finished the paperwork and then we know there's no line, someone comes specific to the boat, weather being equal in the future, I will always try to check in after hours. After it, seven. After seven. It just, it was so much easier. I, and that may just be me and it may not be like that because I haven't actually done the online check-in during hours yet, but it was awesome. Um, coming back was amazing from a check-in perspective. You have to check out, right? So Cause you have, well, you have to stop and check out in the Bahamas. They now, like, it used to have a problem people just leaving and not doing it. There for a while, you could just drop your paperwork at the check-in office at Bimini Big Game Club. But now they actually want you to come back through and drop your paperwork back off. And they made they pointed out to us that there's a $5,000 fine if you get busted doing that. So basically, if you don't check out, Either you need to choose not to come back to the Bahamas 
or expect to pay a $5,000 fine, supposedly. Um, coming back into the States, I, um, some of our previous videos, we've talked about the CBP Rome app, which is the US Customs and Border Protection app. When we first got it, when they first turned it on, they didn't have like app notifications. So if you submitted it, they basically said, we'll call you and you get one chance to get that call. One year we missed the call, they made us drive to a very specific custom spot that was way out of nowhere at some executive airport. It cost us like three hours of our trip. This time, because we had uploaded everything, they've, they've made some changes to the app. Pretty much the second we submitted our information, and we filled all our information out, uploaded our pictures of our passports and everything before we left Great Harbor K. So we were ready to go. Probably within two minutes, five minutes at best, when we, when we hit submit and I handed my phone to Steve, he got a pop-up that said they're requesting us to join a FaceTime call. We literally came onto the FaceTime call. He said, I need to talk to the master of the vessel. I got on with him, told him our stuff. He asked to talk to one of the guys, had him take off their sunglasses, confirm their names. The other guy, take off sunglasses, confirm his name. He's like, all right, you're now considered checked in. I'm gonna shoot a message to the, uh, the, the vessel master's text. Should you have the information showing you're checked in? And it was that, I mean, it was maybe, probably took us 10 minutes to fill out the CBP Rome stuff because the guys were all doing different things. I was filling it out. <laughs> Steve was loading the boat. Matt was loading gear and stuff up. So it took us longer because I had to, you know, I had to run down the guys to get their, their passports, but it could have been a five to eight minute process. And then it was a two minute call. Yeah, to get back into the US, smoothest process I've seen yet. Super easy. Easier than going through an airport. Don't oh, forget. way easier. We, uh, we also had the option of getting uh, the verified traveler status. So we did that whole thing during this process. And so now uh, we've got verified traveler numbers for any time we're traveling outside the US again. And it was a super easy process. It was just part of the deal. It's free. You just literally click. It shows the three guys' names. Which of these guys do you want to go ahead and apply for visit, uh, verified traveler? And you check the three of them. I'm not sure what, that, what exactly that means. I'm sure it's great though. I don't know if that means now when we go to the Bahamas, since we're verified travelers, as long as we submit our information, we're just free to come back in. I don't know if it matters that much to me. If it's always as smooth as it was this time, it wasn't bad. It's super easy. Yeah. What's up guys, Grant here in the editing studio, wrapping up this Bimini edit at the moment. Just wanna let you guys know that we have qualified for the super thanks option. So if you're enjoying this video and you wanna show us some love, if you're getting anything out of it, you can go right down here to the bottom of the video Super thanks, bam, and thanks for watching. All right, so for the actual week, what all we did, you know, like, like I said, we went from Bimini th to Bimini Thursday, got to the Mary Islands on Saturday, and it's kind of hard to say exactly what we did day by day because the days kind of all ran together. <laughs> um, A little bit. For, for various reasons, uh, but we basically bounced around at a number of things. We did a lot of bottom fishing. We did some trolling it a few times. We went down to uh, Chub K, which was amazing, and checked out the pocket and trolled there. We only got in the water once, uh, mainly because, <clears throat> you know, and I've said this in other videos, I'm not a captain. We, we've learned a lot on our boat over the last 10 years of boating and the last, on the, last six years on our boat with a lot of trial and error. And we spent a lot of our time on the error part of it. So we, uh, we, we, we screwed around a lot. And uh, speaking of the error is, we ran into an issue where I bought the newest Navionics Platinum Plus card that when it's working perfectly, like it is absolutely amazing. I would recommend anyone that has a boat on the salt water, get the Platinum Plus. It's super cool, the stuff they do. But I bought the one that does pretty much the entire Southeast including the Bahamas and a large part of the Caribbean. I can't remember exactly one of, which one it was. But once we got through Bimini, it basically stopped working. And we had no nav. And I had to use the old Insight, which comes on Simrad, which I wasn't a fan of. It may be better now, but we didn't have a lot of our good Navionic equipment the whole time we were over there. So it kind of limited us on some of the things we could do from a fishing, because we just didn't have as good of visuals to see where we were going. On the way back, it was really problematic because I don't know, it's when we got to a certain area right between Bimini and Barry Kay, we weren't losing power to the, the, the Simrads, but something was confusing them. Like the OS wasn't working right and they both kept just rebooting. And they'd work for a little bit and then we'd lose depth and we'd lose the left one. 
and we'd lose the right one <laughs> and then it would do it again so we had enough to as they come on to know where we we're going and not have to go by compass but it was a problem we were going by compass for a while off and on off and on <laughs> I'm that's just saying. That's we, the trial part. We were, um, we were pirates yeah. for a minute. Yeah, that yeah. was the trial part of trial well, and error. We, we tried shaking every wire on the boat, <laughs> and <laughs> it didn't do what you m would hope it would do, you know. But we we saw enough when they were working to know 300 degrees to Bimini, 275 degrees back to Miami, you know. We were going we to make it home regardless. We were, we were going to get there. Um, but... The other thing is, uh, so we didn't get in the water nearly as much as I had hoped. Uh, we wanted to do a lot of spearing and all of that stuff, but because we didn't have our nav working right, we didn't really have locations to good reef. So we only got in the water once, uh, which was actually a really cool experience. Um, we kept going by every day as we come back in, we saw an old bulldozer that was sticking out of the water and we were in like, what, 15 feet? Yeah. So I couldn't quite understand why is this bulldozer sticking out of the water. I thought it was a small pontoon that had sunk. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it actually, we, we saw this thing every single day as we would pass by, yeah. but we weren't sure what it was. Like, when we would go by at high tide, you would just sort of see the top of it, yeah. and it almost looked like just a couple of uh, pylons coming out of the water. But then at lower tide, it looked kind of like a cab. pontoon. Yeah, you can yeah. see the cab of it and something sticking out in front. Hell, and one day, Matt even thought it was a sailboat that we were catching up with. Wasn't that the same thing? <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's funny because you we would be approaching it obviously from a different angle yeah. every day. It looked different, but every we kept time. seeing it. Finally, we were curious enough. We were like, "Let's go check this thing out. What what is it?" You know. And then we got in the water. And it was cool. Yeah. Like it was a basically this this uh, ca uh dredge. It was on a big dredge barge. So basically, they'd been using that to the dredge stuff, and it must have sank at some point, but. If you've ever been to the Bahamas, especially when you get to Bimini and the Barry Cay or the Barry, the Barry Islands, the water's so clear, like almost scary clear because yeah. you go over it and you think you're in two feet of water, but you're actually in like 15. Um, but we did that, and then when we went down to Chub Key, the pocket, if you're not familiar with it, I won't go super in depth on it. It's basically a big V in where the ocean comes in from the east. And you literally go from about 20 feet to 4,000 yeah. in moments. Like we literally were watching the Simrads go from 15 yeah, to went, 50 went nine, to 100 30, yeah. <laughs> went, to just went falling quick. off. My, 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 I don't have the super high end uh, transducer. So I usually around two to 2,500, I'll lose depth depending on my speed. We lost that instantly. Yeah, it went from 100 to, to 2,000. It was ridiculous it how was, fast it dropped. But it was super cool, uh, caught some good mahi. I looked into something that it was massive. It was the largest plagic fish I've ever looked into. And I've caught some decent ones, nothing massively big. I'm not, not, not uh, Ernest Hemingway. Um, but, and then we went over to Chub Key Marina and Resort, which was phenomenal, absolutely beautiful. We decided if we do this trip again, we're gonna go over there because there's a lot of reef, a lot of places to hit up. Um, and then worked our way back that night over to our place beautiful beautiful sunset on the way in water was dead calm uh one day we had a little rain so we decided to have a little liquid and had a good morning for to say the least um it was bloody mary breakfast and it was delicious and you know went on for a long time because it just would not stop raining yeah so for the record it was bloody mary's bre breakfast it was bloody mary's uh, breakfast and uh had sharks at the dock every night, which was quite an experience. It was. Um, sometimes the experiences were less <laughs> less scary than others. We'll um, talk about that in a minute. Too. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute too. Uh, well, before we get into that, I do want to say one thing about the trip. It sounds like you know, if, if you're just listening to us recount it, it sounds like we maybe just bounced around and did a lot of random stuff. And I guess that's partially true. But at the same time, this is three guys who really haven't fished together before, and certainly not in this kind of setting. So. I think the first couple of days, we tried our hand at a little bit of everything. We did some trolling, we we did some bottom fishing, and we really spent the time where we really didn't have a great weather window to get all the way down to the pocket, learning how to fish together. Yeah. And by the time we made it to the pocket, we were pretty efficient. We all had, you know, a real understanding of what the other one needed us to do in whatever situation. The very first time that all three of us got onto a fish at the same time, I had 
a rod in my hand while I was still driving the boat while you two guys were managing the other two fish. I mean, I lost my fish. Don't think we were perfect, but which happens for the yeah. record it happens even to the best fishermen. If you get too many on, and I don't have autopilot on my boat yet because when I lived in Tampa, we just didn't really need it. If you're gonna be trolling a lot and you have limited people on your boat, get the AP, it'll be worth its weight in gold. Yeah. But it was a fun experience. I felt like we grew together as a team throughout the whole thing, and by the end of it, we were fishing, you know, really deep water, trolling, catching really big fish, and, and having our lines back out really quickly, and yeah. just it was just so much fun. Yeah, we made some mistakes trolling, but I've yeah. never trolled before like that. So you, you're gonna make some mistakes. You, you're gonna screw some stuff up. Hey, you still got all ten fingers. I don't. Know I what barely you're have one. About. <laughs> one of them's, one of them's dang near. He missing. was he was very close at one point to having nine. That was. Um, but uh, you know, and this is the thing is like, it's it's a learning process. And even if you, there's a big difference between going out on like a sport fishing charter where you have a mate running all the lines, yeah. rigging the lines, clearing the lines, than doing that yourself. Yeah. Especially on a smaller boat, boat where you actually get made fun of at Chub Key for having just a little guy or whatever she said. Oh yeah, she shamed us. She boat shamed us hard. I mean, all in good fun. She was actually the nicest person we met on our entire trip. Yep. Except for those two girls at Oh, Chub it was Key. the same. It was, it was the same, same girl. Same, oh, okay. girl. It was the same, same, same girl. girl. Okay, same girl. Same one that shamed your 27-foot yeah, boat was, because she <laughs> called it a tiny little thing because every other boat in there. She embarrassed me so long. bad that I actually told her, no, we're lying. We didn't come by boat. We actually swam here. Yeah, we did. Because she didn't believe yeah. it at she all. She thought we came over on 55-gallon drums compared to some of the other boats that were in there. It was <laughs> ridiculous. Might as well it so was for, the nicest place I've ever been. For context, the average boat length in that marina, what would you say, guys? 75 feet? 75, 80 at least. It, it was the, the most consolidated group of giant, beautiful yachts I have ever seen. Most of them rigged for fishing, but I would probably never want to step foot on them or get blood on any of it. And Frigate they Chaser, by the way, is a very nice boat. It Love is. this boat. But we felt immediately inadequate, inadequate, yeah. not classed. I mean, you, you're pulling into a place that is absolutely the playground of, of, <clears throat> of rich people. people who have a lot of money yeah. at their disposal. And, and we're not that. So. No, I'm not bashing rich people. Not at all. But there is a lot of very wealthy people that go to Chub K. And yeah. you can tell because there's a lot of money in boats. Well, and for context, on our way out trolling at one point, I don't know if you guys heard this when listen to the radio, there was an 80 foot something coming in and they were asking about their slip. We could overhear them talking to Marina. He's like, we also have a tender. So I knew it was the boat off to our right. When we talked about their tender, they had a chase boat that was the center console, and it was probably a 32-foot boat. So literally, this 80-foot yacht's tender, as he called it, it was his follow boat, was bigger than ours. So, yeah, they had a tender larger than our boat that we drove over on. I, I also think it's important. This might be the the time to say if you've watched other crossing to the Bahama videos, and people have said plan accordingly because whatever you do is going to be more expensive over here if you don't have enough bait if you don't have enough you're going to have to buy gas more than likely in the bahamas you're going to have if you need food in the bahamas if you need alcohol any types of alcohol beer liquors whatever plan on paying double whatever you paid for it in the in the states they are not kidding it's hard to find in most gas is you can find gas but if you want to find alcohol it's hard to find it takes a little bit of work and you are going to pay at least double. Imagine going to a ballpark, or like a baseball game or a football game, and paying what you pay to drink a beer at a, at a stadium. That's what you pay per beer at, in the Bahamas. And, well, and you have to think about this too: is for people that have never really spent time outside of the states, when you go to these out islands, they are out islands, guys. Like you, you, we're so used to like, oh, let's just run to the local public, so they're local, whatever. Literally, the island we are on had one grocery store. And that grocery store was something you would think of out of a 1950s little mom and pop grocery in it, some small town. Three aisles and three refrigerated cases. That's yeah. what it had. So whatever they had in stock and, and in, a, in a place for like medicine, which was kind of bug repellent and eye drops and like little things. But they did. It was not Publix. No, it was no. not. It, you can't go to an IGA or something. It's and you're paying 12. like. 12 bucks for like a 10 pound of ice, 10 pound bag of ice in one place? We played 14. $14, 14 for 20, 20 pound for, bag. For 20 pound bag of ice. We paid. We paid uh, $240 for three and a half for three cases, and a half of, cases of, of, first of all, bottles of Bud Light, we which 
You don't put glass on a boat. But that's all they had. But that's all they had. So we had, we were forced into the hard decision of either not drinking or bringing glass on. So we made the responsible decision. We brought the glass on the boat. A agree, a agree to agree. You had to do it. But just know, every video says, if you need it, bring it. We, unfortunately, on a smaller boat, we were packed to the gills. And I don't think we could have brought much more than yeah. we brought. Probably not. But I, at the same time, I felt like when we were leaving, we were kind of rushed. Yeah. We felt like we were taking with us everything we were going to need. With the exception, maybe, of, of enough beer for an entire week. But we felt like we were, we were pretty well stocked. The reality is, on a trip that long, you consume more of everything, right? We're, we were going through gas because everywhere we went to fish was 30 miles away. And we were going through beer because, well, we were in the Bahamas on vacation. And we went through bait because if you think about when you're trolling that much, you're going to hit a bunch of barracudas. Barracudas take your bait, got yeah. it. You're going to go through rigged ballyhoo. If, you haven't, if, you, if you're if you not rigging your own ballyhoo and you're buying frozen ballyhoo and it's $10 in the States, it's $24 in the Bahamas and to so, buy a three pack. And That's surprisingly, ridiculous. as much fish are over there, it is very hard to find your own live bait over there. There's not a lot of like- We didn't have a lot of ballyhoo. We didn't have a lot of ballyhoo behind the boat to pull in. We didn't see a lot of bait fish underneath us to even yeah. sabiki up. We didn't really spend any time looking in the flats, but we typically don't because I got a 21 inch draft in my boat. But I mean, it is like, take it serious. When they say they're not there, uh, they're not there. But also, and spirit of saying we were rushed we also went to aldi for our groceries it was the closest grocery store which i love aldi don't get me wrong but you know it's shopped in aldi they may not have all the you know it's not quite as big as a lot of the great big grocery stores so you're kind of limited on some of the things you may need these guys ran in because i didn't want to leave the truck we had the rods in it they were in there for about 15 minutes so we supplied up for a week in about 15 minutes with 240 dollars worth of groceries 240 dollars worth of groceries which how much were the groceries in that little shop? Oh, and they were they were pricey, very very pricey. With the exception of one thing, I'm gonna I'm for the record, I'm gonna tell you where going. Going. Don't take up space in your boat with Vienna sausages. It's unnecessary. Every store in the Bahamas has Vienna sausages. How many did we take them? Uh, like a case, you know, a flat, like because that's the what box, most, right? That's what like I, I started to grab a few Lucy's and realized that it was just so much easier to walk back to the cart with just the entire cardboard flat of these things and i was like you know this is camping food right like we, we might be sleeping on the boat this is this is something that we're all going to enjoy not true uh even the fish wouldn't eat them we tried fishing with them we tried chumming with them we tried feeding them to birds we wound up you know leaving an awful lot of being a sausage on the table in the bahamas um and completely unnecessary every store has it don't waste the space <laughs> agree so the other less lessons are one you can't bring vegetables or fruits over so don't do that the other is bring everything you need and nothing more you don't bring i just in case just in case just in case like bring the stuff that you know is smart like super glue little stuff that you always may need that are multiple multi function things but don't bring stuff you're not going to use super glue sunscreen Visine, Advil, Boost, um, booze, bait, Boost. and uh, medical stuff. Because yeah. your hands are going to get beat up, your feet are going to get beat up. You need, you know, you need to be able to have protect some of your your skin issues that you're going to have. Lots of sunscreen, but but you don't need a lot of clothes most of the time. So s go skimp on some things, but but make sure you have enough bait, ballyhoo, beer, like all those things that if you run out of and you have to go buy are not going to cost you three times what they do in the states and then the thing to also think about is what's really great is when you do some of these things is yeah it would cost you an arm and a leg but a lot of people are scared to do these types of trips because they think what happens if something happens to my boat like i break down when i get over there or something like that you're always safe if you outside of your weather being smart like if you're on these small islands if your boat were to break down for one, there are tons of people around that were close to us that cruisers and stuff, they're helpful. If you we had to, we could probably, let's say the marina will happen to be out of fuel. We probably could have walked around and found enough people to pull together big gas for us to get us back to Bimini. If we had to, there are people on the island that can fix the boat. Again, you're just gonna pay for it. So make, I think the biggest thing I would say is don't screw with the weather. That is, that's one thing that can kill, cost you your life. The other stuff, can cost you money which would absolutely suck 
but you're st you're still safe. Yep. So so <clears throat> again, back to the moral story is bring everything you can because it's so expensive there. We, we're like I said, we're paying three x for beer. It was uh, in the states right now. I just filled my truck up and it was, I think it was like four seventy a gallon. Uh, we paid seven bucks a gallon for gas in uh, Chub Key. Yep. Key, and it's just more expensive. So if you want to do this type type of trip, either make sure you have the money to just go do it, or plan for it, knowing it's going to be a vacation. It's going to be a little more expensive, but we probably netted out when you guys say because we didn't go out to eat. Yeah, we almost ate fish. at all. We caught all we the fish. Had, we, we, needed. Ca we caught a lot of fish. We didn't eat a lot for breakfast. Sometimes nothing. Um, <laughs> uh, but the only times we went out to eat were the what two nights we were in Bimini. Yeah, we could figure it. We and then we went to Chuck Key. We, we had lunch. One day we had lunch at Chuck Key. Yeah. Uh, also, we've been going back and forth all week long about Key versus K. If uh, if you feel like it, leave us uh, a little message in the comments and tell us which you prefer. Because uh, we honestly keep just saying the wrong one every time we decide. It's C A Y. It is C A Y. C A Y. What is that to you? Hit us up in the comments. Yeah. From everything I've read, you can say it either way, but we would love to hear what the consensus is among yeah. our, our viewers. Yeah. And while we you're actually agreed to say K, but we all keep saying Key. Yeah. So. And while you're in the comments, hit subscribe to this channel. It really helps out Trigger Chasers. Like, know. subscribe, and comment. Yep. And if you want to hit them up on, on Patreon, they're there as well. So make sure you hit that. Yeah, we could use the support after this trip. Yeah. We spent... <laughs> we, uh, we need the money back. <laughs> we spent... <laughs> New merch is coming, we promise. Oh, yeah. Lots of slogan shirts. It's, Just wait. It's definitely coming after this trip. All the slogan series. We, All right. We spent more on fuel than we did on lodging, for the record, on this trip. I spent yeah. more in one credit card transaction on fuel than I've ever spent in my entire life. Than probably you expected to spend on the trip. <laughs> I had my... My, my wife had to text me and go, hey, is, is this is this real? And I go, yep, it, it is. It is not often you get a notification on your phone oh. from your, your charge card company that says large purchase approved yes. for fuel. For fuel. <laughs> yeah. We we dumped just under four figures into the boat one day, and that was a that was a brutal, brutal gas up. But um so let's talk about experiences. All right. Don't you think? Yeah, yes. let's do that next. All right, so Let's, let's talk about the fun stuff we did this week now. Um, what are y'all's what favorite experiences of the week? Matt, you go first. Um, so I, I'm going to throw out a couple. So number one, I caught a bunch of fish that were the first time I'd ever caught that species. I caught a black gun tuna, caught a mahi, caught strawberry grouper, uh, queen trigger. All of those, first time catching those fish. It was super fun, super cool. Uh, but if I had to choose one experience, uh, I'm going to say it's the shark encounter or near shark encounter. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we had these sharks, you know, we had this condo, first of all, that was right on the water and it was awesome. We would pull the boat in and, uh, you'd get off. It was basically like a concrete pier coming out from underneath our condo. And so we docked the boat on one side and on the other side, there was, some plastic steps that went down to a little plastic floating dock, not very big. And, um, you know, there was maybe, I don't know, a 20 foot by 40 foot space of water between us and the next condo where so, we had sharks come in every night when we would clean fish. So for context, most of the boats that were there, <clears throat> we were on an end unit. So where we parked our boat was actually on the very end out in the open. A lot of the other people, it's that underneath spot is basically where they would put their boats. So literally, like a garage, the, like a garage. The, co the the condo came out over the top of it. So to Matt's point, you could go all the way up under it. But where this dock was, it stuck out. So we literally had what a, a twenty by twenty foot space that was just open water out behind that dock, right next to the cleaning station. So yeah, all right, go ahead. So we would clean our fish every night. We would throw the scraps into the water, and we would have, you know, somewhere six to ten, twelve sharks come in, and they would just get whipped into a frenzy fighting over these these scraps of fish and uh you know some nights we were drunker than others while we were doing this process and it just became this game of trying to get them whipped into a frenzy and, uh, and this is again this is the error part of the trial and error um yeah. because the, they weren't just nurse sharks we'd have nurses we'd have caribbean reef sharks we'd have bulls like there were legit sharks down there there yeah. were some so, big sharks like yeah. everything from three or four feet long 
to what looked like eight or nine or ten foot long. Some, some there was, big, there was, was a couple of boys, boys that there. were big boys. Yeah, really decent sized sharks. And so, um, I don't know, it, at one point they didn't quite seem to have the level of interest that we had come to know from this group of sharks. And so Steve walks down and he's like taking a fish carcass and kind of slapping the water to get their attention, you yeah. know. Well, he comes back up off of this floating dock and I decide to go down and Steve's sort of coaching me. He's like, oh yeah, you got to go out here on the corner. And so I'm I'm down <laughs> I just, on the I just, corner for the of the record, this dock. this dock was not stable. Like, like the first time I walked out on it, the stairs literally like sunk when I climbed out on it. Yeah. And it, it was fine for what it was, but we probably shouldn't have been screwing around out there. And, and the dock is maybe, you know, the pier that we were on was three feet above the water at that point. That dock was about six inches above the water when, it, when, when you it, stood when you stood on it. Yeah, when I, one of us would stand on it, it, it got closer to the water. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so, on that note, I, I go down to the, the far corner of this dock, as close as you could get to the sharks and there's stairs going down that have like this little metal railing and so I'm bent down with a bloody fish carcass in one hand and holding on to this railing and I go to lean over to to slap this fish on the water to get some shark attention and all at once the stairs give way evidently they were not connected to this dock and so I'm falling backwards into the water uh, and all of a sudden the sharks are interested. Fish in hand. Fish, fish in, in hand. <laughs> Flailing with a bloody fish. Uh, the stairs bent probably about 45, 50 degrees. 45 degrees over. And yeah, I think about the only things, only parts of my body that were still on that dock were my tiptoes and the hand holding that railing. The rest of me was crouched down and falling backwards into the water with a fish. Um, Not to luckily, mention one idiot didn't realize all this was going on was still cleaning fish. And throwing bits in the water, <laughs> still jumping, still jumping, jumping the shark. The shark. <laughs> yeah, it 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 happened in a flash, but it basically uh, there was one loose bolt holding those stairs on, and when that caught, I was able to get enough uh, purchase to pull myself back in, and I just basically launched myself back onto this dock and immediately got back onto the concrete. That was probably my my favorite experience. Um, you you were within a foot of being in the water with a with a dead carcass in one hand backwards. Yes. Literally within a foot. And the last time we tried that. Agreed. It was the last time Agreed. we tried that. That being said, the shark encounters after that were still very exciting. Every time we would, you know, throw it in, we were attracting new sharks. And they'd fight each other for it. That was your favorite because yes. you'd giggle like a little schoolgirl when you'd throw it right in the middle of them and they'd watch them like hungry, yeah. hungry hippos at carcass. Oh, yeah. Like the best was if you could get it right between two sharks when they were each going in opposite directions. You know, it's like head here, head here, throw it in the middle and they both turn into it. They would go nuts. I mean, they weren't hurting each other, but they were certainly fighting over the scrap of, you know, fish. And at was, the surface, launching themselves out it was crazy and you could tell these sharks have been conditioned because we were at it was an entire line of condos like in a big l shape and on the other side was where the marina is so you have all these cruisers and yachts and like when we try to get them on the way out with the fish we had left over in the morning they didn't come around you can tell these sharks have been conditioned to know people come in at night clean fish and they're ready to show up yeah as soon as they hear fish coming in the water agree so that that was my favorite experience steve uh what was your favorite experience? So mine, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about it. Um, I, I am not a very experienced snorkeler. I've done it probably twice in my life, and it's never been when I can't touch my feet on the sand right off a beach. So snorkeling in three miles away from anything, or five miles away from anything on that on that bulldozer, on that dredge barge, um, was ridiculously accomplished. Like, I felt like a, a ridiculous amount of accomplishment for that. And it was, like, we saw, yeah, for me, Snorkeling. The water was gorgeous. The water was gorgeous. I could see everything. We saw rays. We saw all these. So I had saltwater tanks for a long time, and it was like swimming through my saltwater tank on a ocean-sized scale. I saw, you know, I got up close and personal with lionfish, which if I had a spear gun, we probably should have killed those because they don't want them in the Bahamas. They don't want them really anywhere. But, um, but I got up and close and personal to two different, two or three different lionfish, which I thought was, I mean, like seeing them in the wild just floating there. Which, it was amazing. They're beautiful fish. Don't they are. Wrong. But they're native to somewhere like, I think, like the Indian Ocean or something like yeah. that. And they're and invasive as hell. They basically, at some point, you guys can look it up. They got released here. They have no natural predators here. So they just, and they just eat like crazy. They destroy reef. They destroy bait yeah. fish. So they want them gone. But they were absolutely gorgeous fish. They're, 
every fish in there was gorgeous. We had, and when you get down in there and you're snorkeling, I had the camera on, and hopefully you'll get some good fit, footage of that, um, is we had schools of, I don't even know what they were, but they would swim to you instead of away from you. So I had fish swimming through me, like by me, thinking I was part of their school. It was amazing. It was one of the most amazing. I, I'll only to say, this, the second on that list is we had a sea turtle come up behind our boat um, when we were in Bimini. That was the length of the width of that boat, of, of a frigate chaser. And it, it freaked me out at first because it was like I, I saw a dinosaur. It was the neatest thing ever to see a turtle that size. I mean, it was huge. Surface four feet behind the motors. And again, and the water's so clear, you can see every You can bit see of that it turtle. forever. Like, I, it was so pretty. I mean, it was, it was gorgeous. So the sea life there was just phenomenal. I, wish, I really wish we'd have gotten the water a little bit more. I know. We, when we do the trip again, we talked about how to how to plan around getting in the water more, but that was a ridiculous experience for me. Shannon, what was yours? I think for me, it's like there's a couple things. One is just the accomplishment of what we did. I know a lot of people go to the Berry Islands. A lot of people even go further than we did, but you know, I, I started out in the salt water, grew up with a boat in, in, uh, in Missouri, and I've done a lot of, of boating, but not really, you know, until we got down here on the ocean, We've done good trips. We've taken the boat from Tampa to the Keys, stuff like that, but it's very different. Like when you go to the Keys, you're never too far from shore. We have done middle, middle grounds trips, but to take your boat to where cruisers go and to go, you know, it's 140 miles to, to the Berry Islands on this remote little island where no one's at, to do it with just two other guys on the boat with you, just the accomplishment of doing that whole trip, I thought was amazing. Agreed. The second Agreed. one is just more of an emotional thing Steve and I have been friends since kids. We got really close in college. But over the last 15 years or so, we've lost touch. Getting to be able to just rekindle uh, things with Steve. Always know, not always know Matt, know Matt for about 15 years or so, but didn't really get to hang out with him much. I started working with his wife, getting to know Matt really well. That was amazing for me. And then I think my other was probably just going and trolling the pocket. It's something I've always <laughs> wanted to do. It's this, like, for someone who, anyone that loves fishing, if you're a saltwater fisherman, especially like a pelagic fisherman, it is one of these world-renowned spots. And I, you know, and I've been lucky. I got to do a charter fish in Capos, Costa Rica, which was yep. the billfish capital of the world, but wasn't on my boat doing it with my buddies. And just knowing that we're sitting there, there catching fish in the pocket, that was cool. And then at the end of that day, we came back in, it was about 25 mile run back up to our room, dead calm water, absolutely gorgeous sunset. It was just, you're just, you're just sitting there in the moment knowing this is something I'm gonna remember. And that was that was amazing to me. Yep. Absolutely. The sunset was gorgeous. There was an experience of driving to the pocket where we just went right when you get in, you go from 13 feet to, to 90 feet to 150 feet to, to the drops off the radar when you hit the cliff. And we just sat there for a minute. We're like, we're fishing the pocket. Yeah. There was a moment there where you go, we are in one of the best fisheries in the entire world. It's just no. It, yeah. And, and we're in a 27 foot boat and you're looking around and every, we're surrounded by 50 foot boats. Yeah, 50 to 80 foot sport fishers. Like yeah. I'm, we're talking was, like big hatteras and stuff and we're out there putting around a little 27. And we're crushing it. 5,000 feet of water, having a blast, crushing yeah. it. Yeah, crushing um, it. I think one of the other things that was really cool was, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, so edit that, Grant. Well, let me jump <laughs> in here then. <laughs> so, so you're right. When we got to the pocket, it was it was immediately obvious you see the change in the color of the water oh. you can see the shape the shape that we've been you looking can... at we've been studying this on a map for like you know and on youtube we've been looking at this up because yeah. we knew this is where we wanted to go yeah it just goes from this like v of deep blue water to just turquoise green all around you yeah. it's amazing yeah. it, it was so cool and when we pulled in we were like oh my god we're here because look this is where everybody else is fishing literally this was thursday we had been in the bahamas for this was our eighth day in the bahamas when we finally had a weather window that allowed us to get to the pocket to fish which was the goal of the trip all along up until that point we hadn't really seen another boat fishing anywhere near us we'd seen a couple of big ships like tankers and uh cruise ships. And, and cruise ships and a Sail couple boats. of cargo ships but we hadn't seen anybody else out fishing we literally trolled from bimini to the uh, Great Harbor K, yeah. Key, whatever. Uh, For like the last hour, though. Not the yeah. whole way. Yeah, but no other boats around us fishing, you know? And so we would be out in the middle of the ocean. You'd look around. You wouldn't see any other land. It was just us on a boat having fun and, and 
catching fish, you know, and when we got to the pocket, it was like, okay, yeah, we're here here with the big boys. Like, this is where all (laughs) these massive sport fishing yachts come to, and we were there, and I think we held our own. And we're talking massive sport sport fishing yachts. (laughs) Massive. um, But, yeah, I mean, we caught, we trolled, we didn't troll as much as, like, like I said, like Matt said, we wanted to go to the pocket and really troll like crazy, but the weather window wasn't great. We had planned to do it all day Thursday and Friday. Thursday we got down there and we trolled for a couple hours, got on a couple fish, and then we went and checked into Chub K. And honestly, it was so beautiful. We decided to pay the hundred dollar uh, day fee, but which is up to five people, so it was a yeah. deal. Um, yeah. Just so we could have lunch at the restaurant and then shop in a little shop. And I think it was worth it. It was cool. Yeah. It, and Chub K. Chub K. Key was phenomenal it's it was a, it's a, one of the most beautiful places ever and the people there are so freaking nice like uh, the check-in crew the people there are are delightful very it, everywhere it else great. if you hear people are on bahamas time and they they don't they like a lot of the places they don't seem to super care that you're there and they're not in any hurry the people at chub k completely different yeah. they were well, they were happy and in fact i said you're happy because we're bringing you money? And she goes, no, I'm happy to see your smiley face today. And I go, oh, my God. Well, I was, love you. This <laughs> you were like great. Putting something in the lessons learned category yeah. is we stayed up in uh, Bullock Harbor, Great Harbor Key, so that it was less expensive uh, to have a place. Yeah. And had we gone to, uh, to Chub K, it probably would have overall been less expensive because everywhere we wanted to fish, like Max said earlier, we had to drive – a good ways out sometimes it was 10 miles sometimes it was 30 miles and then going out to chub k it was 30 miles and if we wanted to really snorkel anywhere beside that barge because when you're when you're on that inside of bullock harbor you're just on great harbor great bahama bank there's nothing there it's, there's no there's no reef really outside of maybe a little couple balmies it's just flat and for we would have to go all the way up around the island which would have been 15 to 20 miles but if you were down at chub k literally you pull out of that marina you go two miles out, not even two miles out, no, a mile yeah. out, you're, you're in, the in the pocket. pocket. And then before that, and up and up or all around you, is the reef, there's reef area. So even if we would have paid more for the room there, I think we would have spent less on fuel, less on bouncing around, yep. and probably would have had a substantially better fishing and snorkeling and spearfishing adventure than we had. But we still had an absolute blast. I don't think I've laughed that much in my life on a trip so if i oh absolutely absolutely and to add to that real quick that there were things about staying in great harbor k that we just experiences that we had that we wouldn't have had sharks at the resort resort right at at the uh oh gosh chub k K, uh marina that place is amazing and i would love to stay there but and we probably will someday yeah the sharks right at our front door was amazing and the inlet we, just pulling into this inlet oh my god yeah. that, we you can't about the see it until you get right up on it unless you know where it is and it's literally i don't know when they did it look it up they they carved whatever hole was originally there they blasted it out so it's about i don't know 40 feet wide yeah it's and it's just a rock wall but it's just a little hole that you it, go through and it's it's turned sideways in a way that you can't see it from almost any angle that you approach you have to see the radio tower you line your boat up with that radio tower and by the t- you have, you get within maybe a hundred yards of it and then you can start seeing where the entrance could be mainly that little white sign there's a little white yeah. sign underneath that radio tower that says welcome to great harbor it, harbor k right yeah it's like it's literally like you could drive up and down the coast of this this island all day long and and miss it every it's single time it's like, it's like a, yeah it's a magical little, little entrance it's a secret entrance it's crazy it's this massive harbor though oh yeah and it, yeah. it's beautiful it is beautiful going through it it's beautiful coming out of it to see the ocean like we yes. watched the sunset go down as we're going into it is one of the prettiest things i've ever seen in my entire life 47 years and the people there were also very interesting we had some really cool experiences we with did. some of the local folks. We did. Um, pretty sure we met the mayor outside the, the, uh, <laughs> outside the grocery store. Outside the grocery store. <laughs> we, we got a ride from a random uh, resident who took us to go buy beer in a house um, uh-huh. with a window on the side. And Well, and for the record on that one, like, well, it looked a little shady. We'll finish your story, but... He didn't char- like get charge you guys. Charge you guys. Oh, he's no. wanted a tip, right? Yeah, he just. So this I guy mean, he didn't even ask. He didn't ask for a tip. We tipped him. We tipped him. He just volunteered because yes. we were looking for beer. 
He's like, I can just drive you someplace. Yeah. And like, even though sometimes it felt a little sketchy, the people were so nice. They yeah. were very friendly. The guys at the uh, at the the liquor house were <laughs> were <laughs> the they, they were nice guys. You know, like they uh, they didn't have what we were after, but yeah. they had bottles of beer and they were happy to sell them to us. And you know at Bahamas prices but it was every experience on that island was unique and I'm glad we had it yeah. even even though the other resort was a true resort and probably the fanciest place I've ever you know one of the fanciest places I've ever been yeah ever had the fortune, it was really you know, good fancy. fortune of being I I felt comfortable on Great Harbor Cay right. I felt that, like that was more our speed it was more our speed it was it was great with that said what do you think that if you had to write a slogan for our trip, what do you think the, the tone or slogan so, for our trip is? I'm pretty sure we're all going to say the same thing for the record. 100%. Matt? Expensive and trashy. Expensive <laughs> and trashy is exactly right. <laughs> we nailed expensive and trashy. And it, it started, honestly, it, it started um, when the water wouldn't turn on. Um, at Bimini Big Game. At Big, Bimini Big Game. Which is a common theme for anyone that's never been there. I've stayed in that resort two or three times now for multiple days. At certain times every day, yeah, no water. You can turn on all the faucets and nothing happens. Yeah, well, and please understand, this is not an insult at all. We're, We're not taking it. anything away from it. It was the perfect vacation for three guys who would have probably felt slightly uncomfortable in a resort. Yeah. You know, that's not Especially really us. a fancy Chub K resort. I didn't exactly. bring clothes to, to no. walk around Chub K. We are t-shirts and flip-flops kind of guys. Exactly. And, and sometimes we'll, it's multiple day worn t-shirts and flip-flops kind of guys yeah. i got one t-shirt that's orange that you can see from space no. that i couldn't have worn there it's not orange no. it is hunter orange a full Neon. long shirt like this <laughs> it's retina searing it's, orange it's so, it has retina the color has orange is exactly right it's, it's so bright i couldn't wear it myself i couldn't look at myself with sunglasses well yeah i mean so. this place uh big game uh what is it big, big, game, big game club Benny big game club it's awesome when you pull in the buildings are brightly colored. Oh, it's there's there's a bar right there on the water. And ping pong. And it's excellent a, food. It's I mean, a, the bar was it, great. It's actually a world famous place. Back yeah. in the day, it's where Hemingway, all these different celebrities would come, and that's where they they bank out of to go do all the marlin fishing and stuff. It's not quite what it used to be, but it's still awesome. It yeah. was awesome. We had some interesting experiences there when we checked in. They, you know, the the people who would normally check you in were gone. So we got like the security guard who went in and made us a key for our room, sends us on our way. We're literally loading up, I don't know, probably 100 pounds, maybe 150 pounds of gear a piece uh, up to our room. We get up to the second floor at the very farthest end of the resort. And our, not only does our key not work, it won't even make lights come on on the door. Not, he, nothing red, nothing green. It just didn't happen. And he walked up there and said, if I'd known you were loading all this gear, I'd have given you a, a room on the bottom floor closer to your boat. I'm like, that'd have been great. That would have been awesome. But what he did do was he said, Called let me make a phone call. <laughs> he pulls out his phone to call his boss to find out what to do and instead accidentally calls a buddy. And the buddy's like, hey man, I haven't talked to you in forever. He's like, yeah, I got some customers here. Their room key's not working. Stayed on the phone with his buddy for a good 15, 20 minutes. He's <laughs> caught up. You know? <laughs> they, they got caught up. He wasn't in a rush. We weren't in a rush. It was all good. And eventually we got a key to a different room and we went there. But I love the vibe. I love that everybody there is just kind of on their own timeline. Well, and it was just relaxed. And honestly, it normally when I go on a vacation, it takes me four or five days to feel like I have, you know, relaxed to the point that I'm not thinking about work anymore. I'm not thinking about family stuff anymore. I'm just on vacation. By the time we left Bimini Big Game, I was in the zone. I was relaxed. Those people know how to just put you into that. Nothing matters. Yeah. You know, you're here. Relax. Calm down. There go are, have a drink uh, at the bar. Are, here's it was cool. I, here's something I would say, though, is like if you're ever planning on doing this is don't be self-deceptive. Self know what you actually expect on a vacation. So like we kind of had three different experiences, Bimini Big Game Club, our condo in Bullock Harbor, uh, where literally if you needed something, you could go call a cab or try to find someone. But we walked into town, it's a little tiny yeah. grocery store. There was a substantially nice liquor store that happened not to be open. And then we went to Chub K, which <laughs> is extremely, extremely fancy. Don't convince yourself if you're fancy that you're okay with expensive and trashy 
right. and don't be expensive and trashy and convince yourself you need the Chub K experiences. All of those are fine. Yep. Yeah. Like every one of those. Every one of them is fine. And good. But just make sure, like, if you're a, if you're a high end person that wants to be waited on and wants water to work all the time, <laughs> go make sure, go to a place like that. If you need running um, water. But and there's nothing wrong with any of them. Just don't don't mislead yourself to say no. I'm okay with being a little rough, and then getting to the resort or your condo and being miserable. That's 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 the best way to ruin a vacation. Yep, for sure. All right. So with that said, <clears throat> I have two more things that I want to talk about at least, right? And one is, um, what does uh, everybody needs a bobo mean to you guys? Because part of our trip, we had everybody needs a bobo come out. Maybe you can start with. Yeah, we should probably tell who Bobo is. Yeah, yeah. Start with start with everybody needs a Bobo, and then and then how do we apply it? All right, so um, there was a band that I loved growing up called Avail, and Julie and I... Up. We can put a link in the... Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We should link Avail. Everybody should know Avail. They're fantastic. Just really... It's a, a punk band. Punk rock band, but just great shows, high energy, great people. And, um, you know, my kids grew up listening to Avail, and Avail just came down to play in uh, St. Pete just a couple of months ago. We flew our kids in, and they got to see Avail for the first time in their lives, having grown up listening to them. And who do they listen? And, and who do they get to meet? They got to meet Bobo, uh, who is sort of the cheerleader for the band. He doesn't play an instrument. He's not the lead singer, but he is maybe the energy and the spirit of this band. And this guy is just phenomenal. He is just a super nice guy, first of all, but also. I don't know that that band would be the same without this guy just like, you know, he's with like his a hype energy. man for a rapper. Exactly, exactly. But he doesn't necessarily have a part in the band of singing no. or. Well, I mean, he does sing. He uh, does I, sing I think a he's got. He kind of jumps in though. Yeah, I think he's got a, a lot of parts. I mean, I think he's maybe. I don't know for sure. I can't speak for him, but I mean, he to me, he feels like an integral part of, of uh, the operation there. You know. Yep. So speaking of which, before we go on, just it's something we like to do always on Freaky Chaser is pay it forward to other channels and stuff there there's a, uh, a group called life by the bow husband and wife couple i think they're married doesn't matter to me um <laughs> that they go all over the place they're, they're in the keys of the bahamas they now have something called a veil gear which i got their first shirt and their flay knife before this trip shirt's great quality flay knife can't say we used it because i forgot it in the truck but from everything it looks like it's, it's great quality yeah. but definitely check out uh life by the bow and their veil gear um it's definitely worth checking out so back to everyone needs a bobo. Yeah, I, I just feel like um, I think at, at some point in this trip, all of us have maybe been that cheerleader, yeah. hype man, uh, you know, just full of energy and positivity uh, for the other two, you know. But uh, I do feel like that became a, a theme of the trip is how much better would life be if everybody had that kind of positivity and that kind of energy and that somebody just rooting for you and just being part of your your thing. I you think know? it made our trip better. I think it well, did. Well, I mean, that's the big thing, too, is you go on these trips – you know, like Steve said, he had never, like, like trolled, like, doing it on our own. And there are a lot of new experiences that you had, a lot of experiences I had. And we're all still learning. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are times I'd be like, hey, don't do this. Or you'd be like, don't do that. And none of us are yelling at each other. We're trying to help each other. But sometimes, it's, so sometimes it's like everyone needs a bobo means you need help. Yeah. You need friends. You need people that cheer you on and help you not do the stupid stuff that we've learned not to do. And that's... And it, you need somebody to say... You're crushing it. Yeah. Like, or or when you catch a strawberry grouper for the first time, put your poles down and cheer. Or the, like we, or the 40th time. Oh, the, or the 40th time. We caught a lot of, we caught a lot of strawberry we grouper. We did. Oh, man. We got into them. But. Favorite saying yeah. from the trip? Yeah. We, so, when you're, we have three guys spending sometimes 12 hours on a day on a boat together, sometimes eight hours drinking breakfast bloody mary's um and we watched a lot of random youtube like we came up with a lot of sayings yeah we did so steve what, what would be your favorite saying from the trip that's appropriate for the video um so so i think lucy's really caught on um and it wasn't even my experience unfortunately it was matt's but it, it turned into <laughs> everything we did from that point on so definitely a catch-all it was a it turned into a catch-all which was matt took a trip down and, and we were in great harbor k um and and there was a little tiny very very small and i actually got to see it later a very small convenience store 
and and we were looking for some stuff to fix the electronics um and he came back and said all of it all that it had was a a, a bucket of lucy batteries and some bleach and these batteries and literally in a bucket literally right? instead $10 of dollars each yeah. just you don't know if they're they work could be lunch meat. it was like could be double a triple a nine volts just dumped into a bucket two bucks all, piece all random like and you just have a handful for two bucks each right uh, no, they yeah, were two bucks a piece. They were two dollars. Two dollars yeah, per yeah. battery. What, what, I, it was. It was the most random thing ever. And then there's a. We don't sell those, but it, we do. So I asked him if he had any tobacco products, and they also said no. And then his hand went out of the counter, and he pulled out two things of cigarettes, and goes here. And I, so I don't know. I don't know if do you have means something different there. Or but, can you sell? Legally? Oh, can you sell legally? <laughs> I don't know if we bought pirate and stuff. Anyway, but any, everything became Lucy's because from that point on. Um, from an expensive and trashy perspective, like if you bought, most people didn't sell things in big packs because it was too expensive. So we bought Lucy's for, we bought Lucy beers. You go to the stores, yeah, they'd be like, you'd be Lucy. There wouldn't everything. be cases of beer. There'd be like a bunch of Lucy's in the in the cooler, and um, so we ended up buying Lucy's of everything. Lucy's became everything. I got a Lucy bait. I got Lucy's everything. So it was appreciating the fact that you could do onesie twosie things. Um, yeah. Mix and match. Everything could be sold in. Everything could be sold in Lucy's. Yeah, I'll take three cigarettes, a double A, and yeah, and, a, a, and a, a half a bottle of bleach. <laughs> half a bottle of bleach. <laughs> just even just give me a fill my hand. Fill my hand with bleach. That's, I'll take two double A's and a half a half a half a handful of bleach. Yeah. So Lucy's was a good one. However, one of the things we really wound up needing, or we thought we needed, was a wire brush. We were, we had some electrical issues on the boat. We had anticipated we were going to fix those on Thursday. Um, that didn't happen. So when we got to, you know, our our condo, we decided we, we need to start fixing this stuff. And some of the tools we needed got left behind because we were in such a rush to get out. That store with loose batteries had a had wire brush. Almost no tools, but they had one wire brush. But for the record, to get into my uh, console to fix stuff, it's not very big. <clears throat> and the wire brush they had is about the size of a stand-up base. So you have, to, you have to get in there and try to fit that in there and go to work. But you know what? This is what happens with these chips. You make do with what you have because that's what they do every day of the week. It's yep. it's part of their lives. Yeah, for sure. So I, I will say the one last thing that I, about this trip, and, and Grant told me, promote a podcast. So I'm going to. So I have a podcast. If you ever want to see it, it's Can Conversation. You can go find it on whatever podcast you have. Um, I'm going to talk about it this week. But one of the things I appreciate about this this whole adventure is is the adventure piece of it. I think we had a lot of that simply because we took a 27 foot boat all the way to Chub K. Like there was a lot of it that was not scary, but you put yourself in a place where you're slightly uncomfortable because it's yeah. not what I do every day in the office. It's not what I do with my kids when I go on vacation. And I want to take them to have a, a kid experience. And my kids have grown up finally. And I've got an 18 and a 25 year old. We don't have vacations where we do adventures. For the spirit, I feel like this was something my soul needed to get out and push myself a little bit and go, I'm gonna go play with sharks from a foot away. And not, I'm not gonna swim with them after I fed them and I'm not gonna fall backwards into them with a dead fish, but I'm gonna have adventures that I think like just rejuvenated me. So I appreciate that about going, we didn't have to live in comfort all the time. We were expensive and trashy the whole time. Yeah. Um, but well, it was fun and it was exciting and it was it was like away from people and away from your normal things. Go break out and be a little uncomfortable. Go do stuff that pushes your boundaries a little bit. And I think that's important for people. And that's so, I think that's the most important thing on these trips is the stuff you're gonna remember most is never the stuff you expect to happen. Yeah. It's the stuff you don't expect. Right. And like, you know, Matt was saying earlier he caught his first tuna, he caught his first Mai, Steve caught his first Mai. Called the world's largest remora. <laughs> I um, caught a giant remora. It was huge. World but record. They'll talk about those things when they talk about the trip. But that's going to be part of the trip. Matt will say, oh yeah, that's when I caught my first tuna, my first mahi. But the stuff you guys are going to talk about is going to be the cold water, the loading the boat, the, the sharks and Matt almost dying. Uh, you know, like, yeah, it's always cool to go out there and catch these big fish that you're hoping to catch. That's not what makes a trip. Right. That's when your right. software shut down and we were running, we were 40 miles out of... Um, we were dead in the middle. We were, yeah, 40 miles out of Bullock Harbor and we were 40 miles till we got to Bimini, so we were dead middle and all of your console went black. 
because that avionics chip had some sort of issue with it and it shut everything down and recycled thing it, it rebooted everything and we were sitting in the water and we're going hmm all of our navigation's black that we're, ain't good that ain't good. <laughs> that ain't good we got a compass but that ain't good that's why I mean, you have a compass and we could get agree but we could get back we can get back on that compass but there was a part of me that goes i know you were pretty frustrated going i paid for this navy uh, uh, navionics chip i get it but part of me was like this is awesome like well, we were having fun and we were like there's an element of danger but there's also an element of we gotta fix this on our own this is an experience and exploring and and getting through adversity on our own i was having a ball well what i was about to say is amateur tip i'll never say pro tip because trust me <laughs> i'm not a pro <laughs> amateur so amateur tip is when you're going on a trip like that to matt's point earlier get your heading that you know if i go in this straight line i'm going to get to where i need to be even if all your stuff works that way if something shuts down and you're out of wi-fi range you're out of cell phone range and your nav gear shuts down you know you can at least to get to safe harbor yeah. and like that is like because you don't ever want to wait till everything shuts down then be like i don't know which way to point the boat that's why all boats have co uh, compasses still on them yeah the other thing that i think is important to note about the trip is like i think we all learned some things about ourselves like there were things that I was maybe a little apprehensive about. I've, I've never been this far offshore in a boat. No. And I, Agreed. as even though I grew up on boats, it was on lakes, you know? And so I think for me, um, big part of it was I, I was a little nervous about how am I gonna feel when I'm 60 miles offshore and I don't see any land around me and it's just horizon as far as I can see, an ocean, you know? Um, I was nervous about that and it instantly when we hit that situation i realized that that is not a concern for me i was more at peace in that scenario than i was when there were boats close to us i liked being alone on the ocean every time it's uh -huh. done um cool. keep going the only other thing that i will say is there were also things that i wasn't concerned about that wound up maybe shaking me a little bit like when we were snorkeling i had a brand new snorkel and uh you know i've snorkeled a bunch and i've always enjoyed it it's always been one of my favorite things we do when we go on vacation i always want to be in the water i always want to see what's under the water and this shipwreck was just this cool amazing thing and at some point somehow i got my snorkel under the water took a big breath and i think i didn't really understand that that check valve was still gonna allow some salt water in. You know, I, I hadn't used this equipment. It was brand new equipment. And I took a giant breath of salt water into my lungs and realized that I was 200 yards from the boat and in 20 feet of water with nowhere to stand, nothing to grab onto, and it shook me a little bit. I, I swam back to the boat because I was coughing and couldn't catch my breath. And I was kind of done for the day. You know, and I wish I hadn't been. I wish I could have gotten back in the water and and done it some more. Um, I, w I was fine by the next day. I was ready to go out snorkeling again and was excited about spear fishing and, uh, and all of that. But at the same time, I, I was maybe a little overconfident in the things that I had already done, maybe a little apprehensive about the things I hadn't done. But in the end, every experience, every uh, adventure, you know, whether it was a, a mishap or a learning you know, moment, whatever, was part of the fun of this trip. But, it was the best time ever. But the good thing about, you know, you know you pulled in the, the water, but you, did the, you, know, you didn't panic. Yeah. You came up, you caught your breath, you said, I'm not comfortable. You swam back to the boat. We were still around. But if you really had to flag us down, you could. Yeah. You knew you weren't in a bad situation. So you're like, you know what? I need a break. I'm gonna go over there, right thing to do. The other thing I'll say is going back to your point on being anxious about being offshore there is absolutely something magical about any experience that you start at where you're super anxious about it and then you instantly flip to being just cathartic yeah and it's like well that like, was steve in the sneeve in the snorkeling yeah, you know I, I mean, yeah yeah and like it's just it's amazing like you're like i was so nervous about this then you do it and it's like a liberating experience and it's this is why everyone needs to, to your point you got to go push your boundaries and if you're not doing things that don't make you uncomfortable you're not doing enough good things in life. Agreed. So, Agreed. Steve, any closing thoughts? <clears throat> uh, never hesitate to take adventures. 
um, COVID's made everybody super reclusive. And this was what my spirit needed to do is go out and challenge myself a little bit and, and have fun and, and reconnect with people that, like I connected with Matt, the first time we met, I 100% need more Matt in my life. Um, I haven't connected with Shannon in a long time. Um, and Grant, I've got to see Grant um, quite a bit in the last two months and it's been literally the highlight of my life. I, like, I, I'm more excited about being able to reconnect with people that I've kind of lost track of because we all, everybody kind of got busy and had kids and got married. And, this was this is what my soul needed. No, um, I agree. So. I mean, I think one of the best things about the trip was, like, what I'll, again, what I'll talk about more than anything else was just probably even the times just us sitting around goofing off at the condo, yeah, not even potentially fishing or anything, yeah, just watching random videos and laughing our butts off, yeah, and yeah. having a blast. Um, it it was it was an absolute adventure and it was a lot of fun. Matt, uh, yeah, I think exact same emotion there uh just getting out doing something adventurous after two years of being cooped up uh that was awesome and um you know i had another thought but i lost it so maybe come back to me but you know yeah that's what a week of debauchery <laughs> will, will do to you. Nine days will. Of the <laughs> makes your mind cloudy your hands hurt yeah the, this would have been a very different video if we weren't all still in the clouds from this last week um but on that like don't underestimate what a week of drinking all night and then being in the sun on a bouncy boat will do it to your body yeah. it's uh, your hands if you fish a lot and you're doing stuff they will be cut to death you will come home sore but you'll look back at it and you'll be like that was badass smiled and laughed the whole time and my hands and feet have never hurt I got sunburn all the places that I forgot to add sunscreen to. Don't care. Yeah. When, Don't even on care. the way over, like like when it was raining and cold yeah. and it was bumpy. We were like, this sucks. Looking back on it, like we laughed. Like that was we laughed our butts off. That yeah. was fun as hell. Yeah. We had we had so much fun. I think uh okay, I remember my thought. You were talking about um before this trip started, you know, we, we texted each other. Steve and I met through text. We were texting each other for about two, two and a half months. Yeah prior to this trip actually happening, you know, uh, kind of psyching each other up, getting everybody ready for the trip, but also talking about things we needed to know and things we needed to buy and just making sure that everybody was ready to go because we were going to have no time to do any of that when we got here to, you know, head out for the trip. Little but we know we had even less time to do them than we got than we thought. <laughs> exactly. For, I mean, almost no time. We got here, uh, well, weird story, but Steve was at one airport shannon went to pick him up at a different airport by the time we all made it to this house we left within an hour of yeah. all being together yeah. we were supposed to rig Ballyhoo. Um, yeah all thursday night and leave friday morning yeah but one of the Didn't things have, that no i don't even remember who said it i think it was shannon was talking to us about expectations on the trip and talk you know because we were all so excited and this is going to be an epic trip and it's going to be amazing yeah and shannon you know at one point said you know it it will be an epic trip but it's not going to be like every second of every day is epic. There are going to be epic moments throughout the week. Yeah. And I would say that this has been an epic trip with epic moments and new friendships and old friendships. And it is, it was just the greatest experience. I'm privileged to have been a part of it. I just feel very blessed. And I will say, I, I hope this is an annual thing and that we continue to get to do this because absolutely one of the funnest trips i've ever been on and it wasn't all about the fishing to yeah. your point it was it was about the the stupid moments where we got drunk at seven in the morning because it was raining and we weren't sure oh, we were too. even going to get to fish yeah you know and and it was about watching random youtube videos at night and laughing about you know nonsense and it was just a great time overall i'm gonna every part of it just so people get this because i think you're right. If if expensive and trashy, trashy wasn't the theme of this trip, it would be not every day is going to be epic, but you are going to have epic moments within every day, which is exactly what happened. And those epic moments made every day. Like yeah. we we went a long time without catching a fish for a couple of days. We're like, oh, this is horrible. We're not catching any fish. That one fish or that one shark encounter, or that one snorkel trip saved that day. And yeah. we were like, best day ever. 30 minutes before that snorkel trip, we we're like, worst fishing on earth. And then we had that snorkel trip, and we we're like, best day ever. Well, just like when we were trolling. 
Yeah. You know, like, you know, if you know that's been trolling a lot, you know how it goes. You can have nothing for a long time, then you get fired up. And we literally, like, pulled over, and we went from nothing to all three lines, or three of the four lines lighting up. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it was fun. So, um, so, so you, expect so you, epic moments, not yeah. every day to be epic. Yeah, when you're playing these, good expectation. if you guys are like us, like, we are massively fired up, which is why we were texting for two and a half months before the trip. <laughs> we have a good time Sometimes texting. multiple times in an hour. And, you know, yeah, I would always, as someone who loves to fish, I'd always say I wish we caught, could have caught more fish. Some of that was because our nav went out. We didn't have quite the gear. Some of it was because we just screwed off a lot. But it was absolutely epic. Um, so you said you'd do it again? Oh, 100%. percent be excited about doing it again? It's super excited. I mean, this... Anytime we have the opportunity to do this, I'm in. Steve? 100% degree. I'm in. I'm in. Captain? I will. Yeah. I would. <laughs> I'm done. I would absolutely love <laughs> doing you're, this again. You're the it's, instigator of this nonsense to begin with. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing, but what I would say is, as I think, you know, I think you guys both recapped it well at some point, is pushing your boundaries, getting uncomfortable. I wouldn't do that trip again. Not because I didn't have an absolute epic time. <laughs> Because I don't want the same experience. You're smarter now. I want, yeah. You can. And, well, not fine. even that is, you can't go replicate no. your last experience. It's no. if you try to do that, you're going to be disappointed, because you're going to try to get that first time to live up to everything that you wanted it to do, and it's never going to happen. So our next one, we're going to find something new, find something new to somewhere new to go, something new that's stupid to do, and almost kill ourselves, and it's going to be a freaking blast. Well, the water balloons and the squirt guns never even made it out of the head. So, yeah. I, And I will say, if you didn't enjoy this video as much, it's because Grant wasn't on this trip. And I would love for Grant to be on this trip. For one, because he shoots way better video. And every day I said, Grant's going to be so disappointed in this. And it wouldn't just be video of us coming in and out of the inlet? I got a lot of video. I don't know how they'll use it. Um, but find friends that you can go have a good time with. I need Grant on one of these trips. I need to go on a trip with Grant. He's usually on them, but I know he's got other commitments that he couldn't make it. So, but find people that you can thoroughly enjoy and laugh all day with, which is what we did. We laughed all day. We had a funny, we had fun when we weren't catching fish. We had fun when we weren't fishing. We had fun when yeah. we were catching fish. It was well, great. And here's one other thing I would say is like, it's going to sound weird coming from a group of guys who have a YouTube channel, but prioritize. Like, like Grant loves to film, and I love having Grant on the trips because not only is he an absolute blast, but he absolutely loves to film. We had high intentions of filming. Yep. But don't let capturing the moments get in the way of living the moments. And we didn't get as much footage as we have liked. He's but to fish. Steve likes to fish. <laughs> Grant knows I'm going to be worthless at filming. Matt, I like to take naps. Matt, like, <laughs> Matt likes to take naps. Um, I would but, call out a fishing spot, convince these guys that's where the fish were, and by the time we got there, I was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what kind of fish they caught at the lighthouse, but yeah. that was my spot, so I missed it. But, but that's the point, is like, especially in this today's Insta world and stuff like that, is don't let trying to capture a memory actually spoil the memory you're trying to capture. Go have fun. If you feel like filming, if you feel like taking pictures, absolutely do it. But don't let it get in the way of all the other fun you're having. We had a blast. We had a blast. Absolute blast. So with that, I think we're out. We're out. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.